Tonight, I'd like to update the American people on the international effort that we have led in Libya. President Barack Obama has stretched the narrow powers of his office in new ways. Perhaps most stridently, Obama has claimed new powers to make war without congressional permission. You know, there's a lot to be said about George W. Bush's uh, abuses of executive power, but he never fought a war that wasn't congressionally authorized. Under the Constitution, the most important war powers are given to Congress. The ability to actually enter into a war or not. The president has a limited power, primarily defensive in nature, to repel attacks and nothing more. The power to declare war in the Constitution is exclusively reserved to Congress. James Madison said that in no part of the Constitution was there more wisdom to be found than in the clause that gives the powers of war and peace to the legislative branch and not the executive. Uh, he said that the trust and the temptation would otherwise be too great for any one man. After the United States experiences with undeclared wars in Korea and Vietnam, Congress passed the War Powers Resolution to clarify the president's powers. In Libya, we are now in new territory with the War Powers Resolution. The law itself states that the president has a 60-day window to introduce troops, at the end of which he's supposed to get authorization or withdraw the troops. Uh, he didn't do either. He neither sought authorization nor withdrew the troops. Now, he could have an additional 30 days had he submitted certain reports to Congress. He didn't do that. He simply ignored all the deadlines in the law. That's the new territory we're in. The president has said that failing to intervene in Libya would turn the UN charter into an empty vessel. The operations are both legitimized by and limited to the terms of a UN Security Council resolution. But the president of the United States does not swear an oath to defend the United Nations charter. He swears an oath to defend the Constitution of the United States. For the last three months, we've been bombing a country that the President's own Secretary of Defense admits is not a vital interest of the United States. Is Libya in our vital interest as a country? No, I don't think it's a vital interest for the United States, but we clearly have interests there. At a time when the United States continues to bomb Libya with drone missiles, President Obama finds himself in the position of saying such bombings are not part of a war. Are we at war with Libya? Well, the way I like to put it is, from the standpoint of the United States, we're involved in a limited kinetic uh, action. If I were in Gaddafi's shoes, I would think I was at war. And I want to tell you something about uh, the honesty of that approach when the Secretary of Defense goes on 60 Minutes and he can't even deliver the kinetic action line with a straight face. Why the semantics? Well, I think you know, a war connotes what we've done in Iraq and Afghanistan. Our role right now is, is actually very limited. They're trying to define away their constitutional and legal problems by using the word war in a way that's not a common definition at all. The president claims that U.S. bombing of Libya doesn't rise to the level of hostilities under the War Powers Resolution. U.S. operations do not involve a number of elements traditionally associated with hostilities, including sustained fighting or active exchanges of fire with hostile forces, the presence of U.S. ground troops. I mean, that's a pretty bold argument. We're bombing Libya, but we're not engaged in hostilities. And under this definition of hostilities, the president can rain down destruction by means of cruise missiles or robot death kites anywhere in the known world. And so long as no American serviceman is getting shot at, Congress doesn't even need to be consulted. The separation of powers works. Our Constitution works. We will again set an example for the world that the law is not subject to the whims of stubborn rulers, no more ignoring the law when it is inconvenient. That is not who we are.